The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. The streets will never love you back. Bang. What's up, guys? How's everything? Okay. Well, we're on here. I was a little late. Thank you guys for waiting. I appreciate it. Well, today we're going to have a good show. We do this once a week. I skipped last week because of the Super Bowl. I appreciate all you guys being here. I love you guys. Thank you for the support all the time. I get a lot of emails from you guys. You know, look, I got the chief of police emailing me. I have a lot of people emailing me. I appreciate the kindness and the love that you give me and the support. I mean, it's overwhelming and uh, it means a lot to me. It really does. You know, uh, you know, putting your life back together after doing prison time and cooperating with the government is a hard thing. It's not easy. You know, uh, you know, some people out there, I get emails from people who have drug habits. You know, I just lost a, a friend of mine. He was 23 years old. Uh, I was talking to him for three, for uh, two years. And uh, all of a sudden, you know what? I didn't even know he had a drug habit. Every time I spoke to him, he sounded fine. And, uh, you know, that's the thing with people that are on drugs. You don't even know that they're on drugs. But, uh, you know, today we're going to talk about, uh, you know, how do you get your life back together after doing prison time? You know, it's not easy. You know, you have a felony on your record. You're trying to get a job. You know, not everybody has a family to go to. Some people don't have families and some people actually burnt out their families. You know, so what do you do after you do prison time? You know, where do you go? You know, what do you do? You hit the street. Where are you going to sleep? You know, uh, where do you get money? How do you live? How do you survive? It's not easy. It's very hard. So, you know, I want to use my platform to help people out there. So uh, hopefully I could get a point across. I could use my platform to, you know, help somebody out there because that's what I'm looking to do. You know, look, we're all on a limited time here, you know, and as you live life, you live and you learn and you grow. And we do foolish things growing up. And then as we get older, we realize, you know what? What the fuck did I do to my life? You know, a lot of people find themselves sitting in a prison cell and they wasted their life, you know, when they realize if they could go back, they would do it all over again and do something different. Whether you stay in school, whether you took a trade uh, and just break your ass to, you know what? There's nothing like having your freedom. You know, hugging a woman, uh, having children, living your life every few years, whether it's 10 years, five years, you know, life changes in some way for all of us. So that's what I want to do. So, you know, if I can help somebody out there, that's what I'm here for. So, uh, you know, I'm going to give a couple of shout outs. My guy, Boston J, my moderator, Live and Let Live. I'm Eddie G. Pazzo. Hi, Pazzo. How are you? Uh, Legs Cal. Uh, Big Lou. Gregory Orchard. Benny Bronx. So today we're going to talk about how do you get your life back together? So if any of you people out there did prison time and you're trying to get your life back together, you know, come in. You know what I do? What I do is I drop a link and we chit chat, we chop it up and, you know, let's uh, try to help each other over here. That's what I want to do. Okay. And, uh, you know, same old thing. Uh, you guys saw that interview with Rita Giganti, Vincent and Chin's daughter yesterday. I'll tell you, you know what? She's a class act. I love Rita. Uh, the first time I spoke to her, 
I heard it in her voice, her integrity, the class she has, and I know that she learned a lot from her father. And every day of our lives, all of us, we're fighting a battle. We're on limited time here. You know, there's a beginning and there's an end. So, you know, we live and we learn. We make mistakes in life. Nobody's perfect out there. I'm not perfect. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. I went the wrong path in my life. And every day I'm trying to make my crooked past life. I got this little pat platform that I have and I want to use it to help people. So I'll drop a link. You guys come on and we'll go from there. Okay. And uh, Ray Ray, the road dog, how are you? We're going to get together again. We're going to raise money for those kids again. We're going to make sure those kids have a good class trip. I love those kids, and I want to do something for them. Also, uh, Boston J, I appreciate you. Richard Morella, Patrick Dennigan, and all you guys who subscribe to my Patreon channel, I appreciate you a lot. Thank you for the support. And once this book drops, you get a signed copy from me. Okay? I love you guys. So I'm going to drop a link. You guys come on, and uh, we'll go from there. Miss Can't Be Wrong, how are you? I see you. Tony Marilano, haven't heard from you. It's good to see you. Kevin Barakis. Ben Abahad, what's up, Benny? I see you. Tell mom I said hi. And so I'll drop a link, and we'll go from there. Okay, guys? And it's always good to see you guys. So I hope you guys had fun with the Super Bowl. I hope some of you guys won. I won a couple of dollars, not much, but I did have the right uh, pick. You know, Cincinnati plus three and a half was a good pick. So I dropped the link. You guys can come on. Whoever comes on, we'll chop it up. We'll talk about, you know, if you did time, you know, please come on. I want to help you. Dominic Sassamento, you reached out to me. I want to try to help you. And that's what I'm here for, to help people. And like I said, if you have a business that you want to advertise, reach out to me and, you know, I'll give you a shout out and hopefully uh, I can help you in some kind of way. So I dropped the link. I'm Eddie G. What's up, Eddie G? And Eddie G is going to be at uh, the Gotham Comedy Club on February 28, 7 p.m., so if you want to see Eddie G, you know, Eddie G is really funny. I know you guys, you know, don't know much about him. But February 28th, he's going to be at the Gotham Comedy Club. So if you want to check him out, the tickets are only $18. So you can order them online. John C., how are you? Tommy Stiggs. Tom Clams, Richard Morella, Rob D. Big Lou, where are you, Big Lou? You did prison time. Come on, let's chop it up. Let's tell these people about, uh, you know, doing prison time, how it is, the time you lose with your family. Let them know. There you go. I dropped the link. So if I can help anybody out there, whether it's a young kid, whether it's an adult, if I can help anybody, if you're a drug user, I want to help you. I want to help you stop using drugs. Okay. I want to help you get your life together. If I can reach out to one person, you know what? I did my job. That's what I'm here for. Big Lou, come on in. I see you out there. And let's talk about prison life. I want these kids to know. I want these adults to know that, you know, committing crimes and sitting in prison is a waste of life. You know, the best thing is getting a job, supporting your family, and sitting down with your family at the end of the day at the table. And you know what? Raising your kids 
and making your kids, you know, realize that, you know, what they have, teaching them how family is so important. Because, you know, we're on a short time span over here. You know, there's a beginning and there's an end. We're only here for a short time. Pazzo, how are you? Joe Delamora, Gregory Orchard, Gino Vez, Princess Mitch, Ben Volto. Do you guys see the link? Live and let live. Having freedom is the most important thing in our lives. Eating what you want, spending time with people you love. It's the most important thing. A lot of men died in prison, committed crimes, never got to spend time with their family, with their kids. And I want to change this. I want people to open up their eyes and understand that the streets are not the way to go. Get a good job, take a sanitation test, get your GED, do things that are going to make your life better. Richie, how are you? Kelly H. So are any of you guys seeing the link? Is there a link out there? Okay, I'm going to drop a link again. All right, beautiful. So what'd you think about Rita Giganti last night? Isn't she a class act? Vincent the Chin's daughter. I'll tell you, in that interview, I was very nervous because, you know what? I, I spoke to her before, and she's a class act. She has a lot of integrity. And, uh, you know, just speaking to Vincent the Chin's daughter is, uh, I'm very honored to interview her. You know, I hope you like the interview. Wally Peanuts. Princess Mitch. So anybody want to come in the chat? I dropped the link. You could come in the chat. Now, the thing is, look, after you leave prison, how do you use the tools and the resources to create a better life? A lot of people don't know. You could actually talk to your parole officer, your probation officer. They could give you resources. Okay, we got Carlos Munez. This is a guy who never did time before, but you know what? He lived a hell of a life. Carlos. <laughs> What's up, Jimmy? What's going on? What are you, what are you doing? I, I can't believe I got I got the TV on. Hang on, let me show the TV off because it's going to be an echo. How's how's everything? Now listen, whatever you whatever you do, do not tell anybody where you work or where you live. Okay. Well, what's that? Say it again. I'm sorry. Whatever you do, don't tell anybody where you work or where you live. No, no. Not okay. at all. What's going on, kid? <laughs> hey, hey, but anyway, look, this is Carlos Munez. I mean, this is a guy who was a street guy. He had a drug problem at one time. How long are you clean now? 17 years. 17 years he's clean. Okay. I work with him. He's in the Teamsters Union. And uh, he's a hell of a man. Uh, he's a, he's a longtime friend of mine from back in the day. And uh, you want to tell a little of your story? No, no, I don't want to get it. Well, but, you know, you could tell a little of it, you know. I mean, you could tell a little bit of where you've been and where you are today. I mean, this guy's making over $100,000 a year today. <laughs> yeah, at one time, wait, at one time, this guy was working in, in the uh, – in the where were you working? The meat district. Oh, Hunts Point. I was in Hunts Point for 15 Hunts years. Worked, 
He was working at Hunts Point for 15 years. He was hustling. He was making money. But all the money he made, eventually that money went to drugs. And this yes. was clean for all these years now. And now he's got a teamster job making over 100000 a year. He's got a family, two kids. His son just went into what? The Navy or the Air Force? Air Force. Air Force Reserves right now. He's in boot camp. He's in boot camp, the Air Force Reserves. I worked with this kid. And you know what? What a pleasant kid he is. And you know what? Look, he's doing something with his life. And you know what? I respect him and I thank him for, you know what, serving in the Air Force. Jimmy, it was an was excellent, excellent interview last night. Rita, uh, that's uh, royalty. She's a uh, mob royalty. It's uh, yeah, insane. Think, you know what? Look, the little time I spoke with her in the beginning, I was a little nervous. You know, you know, Vincent G Giganti's daughter. And, uh, you know, I was happy to have her. And once she said she was going to do the interview, I was so excited. You know? Yeah, that, that's, that's big. That was one of your best by far. So, uh, me, you know, uh, Bay Ridge. Grew up in Bay Ridge. A wild out. Uh, went to school with Tommy Reynolds, Calco. I'm surprised we didn't really cross paths when I was out there. Maybe it was a good thing because who knows what would have happened because we were all while not you were in your area and I was in my area, Bay Ridge. But yeah, yeah, crazy, crazy times. I'm I count my blessings every day, every day that where I'm at from where I was. Like Jimmy said, yeah, I was out there. I was out there, fucking heavy duty yeah. with everything. I've done it all, and, and I count my blessings. And Carlos never did no big time before. He got lucky in life because you know what? He did a lot of lot of crazy things out there. Nothing as far as murders or nothing, but as far as uh, doing drugs, you know, he could have destroyed his family. But there was a time in his life where he said, you know what? I got to put my family. I got to make my family first. And that's what he did. And today, you know what? The guy's making a hundred thousand dollars a year. He's living with his family. He's got his family together. And he has a purpose in life. Yes, 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 yes. Thank God. And it's all because of my sobriety. Even though I've always worked, I've, I was always a worker, but I hustled too. You know, I was had the both of both worlds, but uh, I flew under the radar. I flew under the radar. I was lucky. A lot of my friends went away. A lot of my friends got killed. But I was one of the lucky ones. I just flew under the radar. Maybe I think personally was well, because I've always worked. So, like, I wasn't one of those guys that's hustling and always out on the streets. I always worked. I hustled, but I always worked. And uh, I was one of the lucky ones. And me and Carlos, are, we're very tight. We're very close. We live next to each other. And uh, now, while you're on here, you could tell them he actually spoke to Sammy the Boat. Yes, twice. Twice. And, uh, and Sammy, that that's uh, it's amazing. I, I would never been able to speak to Sammy if it wasn't for you. And he's a uh, he's a funny guy, really, <laughs> he really is. He's got some sense of humor. I I uh, because when Jimmy went out there to stay with him, I was like, "Do you speak? Uh, are you taking care of my my boy Jimmy out there?" And Sammy was like, "Yeah, yeah, of course, but I can't make no uh, guarantees that he's gonna make it back home." <laughs> you know, he's, he's, <laughs> He's got some sense of humor. He really does. Uh, it's it was a pleasure. It was it's something that I'll remember for the rest of my life that I actually spoke to Sammy the Bull. It's insane when you think about it. And and my nickname for you is tell them what's my nickname for you. <laughs> the bull, the bull, but I'm not the real bull. <laughs> but look, you know what? I call him a bull because he's stocky. And listen, this guy right here, this guy is a tough guy. He really is a tough guy. And he's solid. <laughs> This guy's solid. I mean, if you if you, I'm fat. It, I'm fat, Jimmy. Ah, you're solid. You're solid as a rock. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I'm on here. This is crazy. It's pretty cool, Jimmy. Is there any anyone else waiting to get on? I got Big Lou in the uh, chat. I got another guy, Marco Morelli, in there. But uh, nice. nice. Look, How, look, how's your how's your weekend so far? I'm sure you're like in cloud nine after. Uh, after that interview yesterday, that yo, that's big. She's got the robe, kid. She's got the robe. That's, yeah, that's big. Robe. I'll say, you know what? I really enjoyed her yesterday. Her interview. Uh, you know, Rita Giganti is a class act. Uh, 
you know, I was a little nervous interviewing her because uh, she's the Chin's daughter, you know, the Chin's offspring. That was pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm networking with her. I have her number and she's a friend now. So that's pretty cool, you know. Absolutely. That's a great friend to have. Yeah. And she's uh she's willing to come back too. She said it. She goes Yeah. Yeah, she come back it. whenever whenever you want. Yeah, it's definitely good to have her. And uh she's a medium, so maybe uh, we'll hook up. Yeah, my wife, my wife's big with the medium. So maybe one day we'll hook up with her. I got yeah, her. Yeah, if, if, if your wife wants to sit down with her, let me know. You know, we'll Absolutely. make an appointment because I actually want her to do a you know, a reading for me too. Right. You know, so, uh, you know, listen, it's pretty cool just to have the experience to, uh, you know, do something like that and also, you know, correspond with her and uh, for her to, you know, speak about her dad and give us a better point of view of, you know, who he was. You know, everyone looked at this guy as a mad hatter, but there was also another side to him. Yes, yes. The, it was amazing. Amazing. And I was so happy that you got that interview. This is uh it was big. And thank and thank you for the forty nine ninety nine. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, you're gonna give me that back. I just threw it in there like this. I know I'm gonna give you money. I'm gonna give you that I'm gonna give nah, you that we a, my pleasure, kid. Anytime. I'm, gonna you, I'm gonna give you that back at lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Jimmy, let me go. I wanted to check in. Yo, sky's the limit, kid. Keep doing your thing, bro. God Thanks, bless you. Us, I love you. All good things come to those like you. I mean, you Thank deserve you, it. You Thank put you. in the work, and I love you too, kid. I'll see you soon. i see you soon. Later, Jimmy. Bye-bye. All right. All right, that was Carlos. He's a great guy, a great friend of mine. He's like a, a, a part of my family. I'm going to bring in Big Lou. Marco Morelli, I see you out there. Just sit down and ha- hang tight, okay? I see you. Big Lou, what's up, baby? What's happening? What's going on, Jim? How's everything? So, you know what? Listen, so tell us about, you know, doing some prison time and coming home. Fortunately for you, you have a family like me. You know, I have a big family. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't have family. So when they leave the prison system, they don't have a family to go to. Whether they burnt out their family, as you know, doing prison time, you lose a lot of people. People pass away. So... You know what? What's the resources out there to to yeah. fix your life? Okay, so my, in my case, this last time, uh, I don't want to say my family turned their back on me. That's not what happened. But but because of their own sit- living situations, uh, I kind of had to like go on my own this time. So basically, what that what I mean by that was I had to go to a halfway house for a few months. You know what I mean? Lightweight, get on my feet, and then um, I got a vehicle, maybe. Two months after I was out, Hold on, let me see. No, I'm lying. I got out in July and I got a vehicle just around Halloween. So about four months. No, yeah, about three months. About three months. Uh, from there, I started staying with a family member, uh, you know, in another in another area. And then, um, but the parole is the one that put me in that a halfway house. So yeah, the parole. If that's the thing too with the parole, the parole is not. A lot of times they're not going to offer you stuff you know you have to open your mouth and you have to you know you need to do the footwork and you need to open your mouth if there's things you need now for example if you get a job okay so what they were doing with that program that i was staying at the halfway house every day i had to show up to this office it was called the uh daily reporting center the drc and what they do is you do classes there and then also they help you uh, they do job interviews and stuff like that and they get you plugged in with different uh companies that might reach out that they reached out to and they said yeah we'll take uh parolees, you know, guys with records, because come to find out, I just found this out recently that uh, when they do that, they get big, huge tax breaks when they uh, hire uh, parolees and stuff. So um, they also hire for Caltrans. Now, Caltrans is the is the highway, the freeways and highways over here in California. And what they'll do is they'll, and they'll also clear out uh, like homeless encampments and stuff like that. And um, you, you start off like, I think, 20 bucks an hour, something like that. And you work 40 hours a week, but the program's only for like six months. You can only work six months. And then either they only, either Caltrans will hire you or you end up moving on to another job. And um, so you just got to open your mouth, man. You got to open your mouth and tell them what you need. So like, like I just said, you get these jobs and say you need certain clothes or you need boots or you need something like that. 
you have to open your mouth and tell the pro, hey, look, man, you know, I got this job because you got all my information. I need, uh, you know, boots, gloves, whatever it might be. And they'll break you off a, a voucher to go to Walmart or whatever. You know, I'm not sure what stores they use nowadays, but I'm pretty sure Walmart, you can pretty much get a lot of the stuff from, you know, maybe not the heavy duty gloves, but you can get, you know, pants and work shirts and stuff like that. You know, so you just got to open your mouth, man, and, and you got to say what you need help with. You know, they got tons of money for that stuff. You know, they got grants for all that stuff. Just sometimes they'll be stingy with it and they don't want to, you know, just come out and give it to you. You got to ask for it. So, you know, they got a ton of stuff in there, man. Like even now, um, because of the SAP program that they have in there and some prison yards, they call them uh, hub yards. They have it where they hook you up and give you your ID. They'll, they'll send out the paperwork to DMV. And when you leave R and R, you'll have a brand new ID from California, or you know, since I'm in California, um, they'll place you in a, a program, you know, and they'll pick you up at the gate, you know, so you don't have to spend money on transportation, on you know, the bus, because a lot of times, depending where you're at, what facility, you could spend almost all your money, your gate money, on just getting back to where you're from, you know, depending on where you're at in the state. So uh, you know that that's including bus rides, most likely Amtrak. Uh, you know, but mostly bus ride, Amtrak, uh, you know, you got to eat, you know, you got to do all that on the, if you're on the train for a few hours, because there's prisons that are way up north by Oregon border. You got some all the way by the Mexico border, you know, it just depends where, where, where you're leaving from, you know, but, um, yeah, there's a ton of, like I said, there's a ton of, uh, and another thing too, the pro officers nowadays over this way, I can't speak for anywhere else, but over here, they're more like, uh, social workers now than, than the hardcore pro agents like before. You know, before it was, they want to lock you up, lock them up, lock them up, you know, because it's part of job security because the, the, the correctional officers and the pro officers is the same union, you know, so there is job security, you know what I mean? By sending all these guys back all the time. And so now they're, you know, my last pro officers I had, man, this last time, they're, they're, they were they were real good dudes. You know what I mean? They, uh, they weren't them hardcore, you know, lock, like I said, lock you up. You know, they gave you chances. They helped you out. If you need a rides here and there, they'll, they'll hook all that up too. You know what I mean? Just depends, you know, but you got, like I said, you got to be honest with them. You can't be trying to bullshit them. And, and, and you know, you got to work your program, man, you know, and, and uh, sometimes they might have you go to a, you know, meeting sometimes, or they might have you go to this thing was called the star program, which was at the pro office. And you go down there and you, it's like, you might have to go two days a week, three days a week, you might have to go all day, every day of the week. I don't know. It depends what your, circumstances are you know what i mean but um yeah they'll place you in the housing uh either a halfway house they'll give you vouchers for motels uh you know they'll do all that type of stuff but you just gotta open you gotta say things you know because like i heard you earlier say some people burn their bridges i met a lot of old guys man that were or older guys late 50s 60s maybe even 70s where they've been down so long all their families passed you know they, they don't have nobody looking out for them no more excuse me you know, and then because of whatever games they're playing while they're in there, you know, whatever family members they have left, they're not, they're just not, they're not sending them money no more, you know? So, yeah. It's ugly I, something. I, I, I'll tell you, you know what? Because, look, you know, there's a lot of people that don't have family. There's a lot of people that are uh, an uneducated and they don't know how to, you know, get a job and things like that. You know, some people, don't, they don't have their GED, you know, but there's so many resources resources out there today uh especially if you have a felony you know uh years ago if you had a felony you would probably uh ass out you know now today if you have a felony there's a lot of people out there that are willing to help you uh find a job and get you a job you know and i think even uh some people who employ you they get some kind of benefit for hiring yeah. a felon today yeah yeah i learned that recently they get they get a. Uh... They get some type of uh some type of break. I don't know if it's taxes. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's some type of tax something. But um, one thing too, man, is before I got the job where I'm working now, I got a job at a restaurant, Puerto Rican restaurant, and um, I was just straight up with the people, man. I told them I just got out. You know what I mean? I'm just looking for a chance. You got to be honest. You got to humble yourself. You got to take what you can get. You know what I mean? Um, and I started. I was a dishwasher all day. As soon as I come in, man, they'd have a pile of dishes waiting for me from the morning shift. <laughs> you know, and I just knock it out, you know, I didn't complain about it. You know, I was grateful that they gave me the opportunity, you know what I mean? And I was there for a few months and then I moved on. I got another something else going on and then I moved on, you know what I mean? And that's, yeah. and that, you know what, that's the thing too. You know what, look, see what you just said? You came home and you started washing dishes 
And you know what? Sometimes people think that, you know what? They're too good to wash dishes. But the thing is, you know what? Starting at the bottom builds character, you know? And then what you do is you move your way up, you know, in time, you you know, you get a better position, you know? Listen, for example, when I went to, uh, when I first went to prison, I worked in the kitchen. I started washing dishes. Then from washing dishes, I became a baker. Then from being a baker, I started cooking, you know? So, uh, you know, you have to move up the ladder. So don't be afraid to start at the bottom, move up to the top. And everybody knows that been to the joint, that the kitchen is a, is a pretty good hustle. You know what I mean? You got access to the sugar. You got access to the, the extra meat, foods. You know, certain people need uh, lettuce because they make salads and, you know, different things, just different things. And they, and it's there. Cheese, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, that, yeah, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, I'm not a, I'm not ashamed to say it. I, like you said, I started from the bottom washing dishes. I don't, you know, it is what it is. I don't care. You know, I, had to, I had to start somewhere to start getting my my, my thinking differently. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I used to think like that, too. I'm not working at McDonald's, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Well, you know what? That's the thing. You know what? Look, you start working at McDonald's, um, whether you're, uh, I don't know, uh, making burgers. And then by the time you know it, you know what? If you have a brain and you uh, be patient, you know what? You could make it up to become a manager. Yep. Yep. I've seen that, too. I've seen that. Well, my father-in-law, he started off as a busboy washing dishes at a, at a restaurant when he came here to this country. And then... I don't know exactly how long, but it wasn't real, real long, but it was about, I would say within 10 years, he was, he was the manager of that restaurant. And then a little bit longer than that, he was the manager of all the restaurants they had in that area. And they had like eight, you know, within a couple counties, they had like eight restaurants. And he, he was considered the, I think the general manager or the branch manager or something like that for that whole area. You know what I mean? So it's possible to start from the bottom and end up on the top. You know what I mean? That's, that's for sure. You see all these people, man, that make it big, you know, they, they, they had pretty much nothing when they started off. Like, uh, what's his name from uh, Apple? Was it Job? What was his name Steve Jobs? He started off in the garage, right, with the uh, with the computer, putting the uh, the computers and stuff, you know. And uh, Bill Gates, you know, they didn't start with nothing. Look at them now, you know. Exactly. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that <laughs> Washington, you know. I mean, everybody got their own thing, but <laughs> you know what I mean. But there's a lot of success stories in this in this country, man. That's the good thing about this country. And even though what's going on right now in this country, this is still the best country in the world. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Regardless, you know, and, and uh, uh, but but the thing is, now you created a channel. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, we got one show so far. We did Wednesday. I think we're gonna do some today, but um, Carlos is still not feeling well. Um, he, he got a not yeah, he's not feeling too good. So uh, I don't know. I'm waiting to hear from Nelson. I think we're gonna do some today. So. We're yeah, gonna, so, so, so while you're here, you know what? Shout out your channel. So the channel's called No Fly Zone. Um, it's kind of hard to find. You got to kind of look. It's hard to find, but everybody's been finding it. Uh, I tapped into a couple channels I know, and they they promoted it. And we got a quick fifty extra subscribers, real quick. Um, and basically, we're gonna what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, you know tell our stories. Obviously, you know we're gonna talk about some other type of gangsters, different nationality gangsters some Latino gangsters, you know, we're going to talk about helping, uh, getting at the kids about, you know, don't take the same road that we've took because it's so easy for them to do this. Right. And, uh, fall into traps like, you know, so we're going to basically tell them some of our stories to kind of keep them from, uh, to recognize those, those, those things are going to come at you, you know, and it's not worth it. You know, I, I lost a lot of years, you know, uh, 11, 12 years of my life inside there, you know, and the meanwhile, my kids were, my little kids were out here. You know, now they're grown, you know, and so I missed all them years with them. But now I got a granddaughter. I got a little ones still. Besides my kids that are grown, I got a six-year-old and an 11-year-old, and I got a two-year-old granddaughter. And uh, so we're going to talk, get at the kids, do a little prison reform type stuff. Um, we're going to have some guests on that are working in those fields. Uh, we got a couple guys lined up already. I just don't know when we're going to when we're gonna get, you know, actually when we're going to drop those because uh, – Nelson, Nelson, one of the co-hosts. So it's Carlos, me, and Nelson. Nelson's real busy. He's a he's an actor, so um, you know his schedule is sometimes crazy as far as the filming. So we we, we still haven't set our schedule yet about when we're gonna really do it. You know what day set we're gonna have these shows. But um, yeah, we got some things planned, man. You know what I mean? But um, basically that's why it's called No Fly Zone. We don't want no bullshit, no trolling. You know we ain't gonna tolerate none of that crap. You know what I mean? Because well, guys, uh, yeah, well, well, guys out there, if you are uh, you know, no fly zone. Uh, check out Lou's 
you know, channel. And, uh, you know, if you can, subscribe to it. Yeah, let me, let me, uh, before I get off, let me give a shout out to a couple people in here. Everett Everett, Miss Can't Be Wrong, Joe Delamura, Pazzo, Eddie G, what's up, man? Boston J, of course. Uh, anybody else? Oh, Dale's my name. What's up, bro? Team, uh, Tim Egan. Yep. Yes, sir. So, yeah, that's, yeah. So, basically, that's about it. That, um, yeah, everybody, anybody that's been uh, stuck in that web, man, going in out the pen, man, you, what you got to do is you got to, uh, the only way it's going to work, bro, you, you just can't keep doing it your way because your way hasn't worked. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's what my hard head, that's what I was stuck on. Oh, I, I know how, what I'm doing. I'm no, you know, I got this. I never had it. You know what I mean? I was going all the time. I stay out for a couple years and right back in for another three or four. You know what I mean? So, um, it's a, it's an ugly cycle. You got to break it. You got to break it. And you got to do things you never did before. You got to humble yourself, wash them dishes, man. You know what I mean? You got to you got to start somewhere, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Look, if you got to wash dishes, you know why? It builds character. Yep. I mean, Clean you know, toilets, whatever. First, look, look, what you do is you hold on to that job until you get another job, a better job, you know? And uh, listen, if that's what you have to do to support yourself and support your family. You know, listen, I... Uh, I commend you on that. Anybody out there, because you know why you're doing the right thing and you have your freedom. Your freedom is the most important thing. You know why? I'd rather have my freedom than sitting in a pre in a prison cell. You know what? Wasting my life away. Yeah, telling war stories with your silly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Hearing him fart in the middle of the night and shitting next to your head. You know what I mean? And we all make mistakes in life. And the thing is, look, we all make mistakes in life. You know what? You start from, you know, a child and you make mistakes. And what you do is and along the way, what you do is you better yourself and you correct those mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. You know? And, uh, you know, that's what life is all about. Living and learning. Yep. Pink Bill. But I got uh, Marco Morelli in here. Lou, I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, No Fly Zone, check it out. Subscribe to Big Lou's channel. And uh, let's see what uh, he's got to come in the future. Yep. All righty. Thanks, Jim. All right, Lou. I'll see you soon. See you later. All right, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Well, I had Mark... Uh, Morelli in here. I don't know. He disappeared. But, uh, you know, look, I did time before. Fortunately for me, I have a big family. And, uh, you know, when I first came home, I actually uh, relocated to my sister's house in Staten Island. And I had a state parole officer and I had a federal parole officer. Now, I had two parole officers, actually. My state parole officer actually went to my sister's house and uh, he tried to intimidate my family and say, you know what, because he knew a little about my background. I was being investigated for a couple of things and uh, like he was trying to scare my family. And my sister, my mother uh, at that time told me, what are you talking about? This is my son. I love my son uh, with all my heart. My son would never ever do anything to uh, hurt me uh, and jeopardize our, you know, lies and stuff like that but uh you know this is where you have to find yourself if you do prison time and want better in your life so i got marco morelli in here let's see what marco morelli has to say hi there jimmy how are you mate all right good how's everything where are you from we're from wales uk okay nice me nice to meet you and you, mate, just been watching a lot of your stories. Really appreciate what you're doing and reaching out to, to young people. Well, all different kinds of ages, you know, coming from a background that you've come from, mate, jail, you know, and all the shootings and the killings and different things you've been involved in and just reaching people. Uh, just listening to Big Lou now, um, you know, doing a bit of jail time and, you know, starting off pot washing and stuff like that. Inspirational, mate. Inspirational. I come from a background of drug dealing and crime and, and now I work um, as a Christian, um, working with the you know homelessness and different things in the society in Cardiff. Are you in Cardiff in Wales, UK? Uh, I was I was never there, 
I, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. I would love to visit sometime. Yeah. I have I have actually some friends out there that uh, contact me every so often. You know, yeah. uh, you know, obviously my channel, uh, you know, you guys are watching it, you know, uh, all over the world. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm very uh, honored to uh, have you on here today. And, you know, thanks for coming on. But uh, tell me a little about yourself more. Well, um, I was brought up with a couple of, couple of my brothers. Um, you know, two of us got involved with the drugs and the crime, you know, ended up doing a bit of time and stuff. Um, you know, just destruct, destroying my family, really, mate. Um, yeah, and, um, you know, I, I come to the point in my life, you know, we ended up in jail and different things, you know, just just, you know, just wrapped up in it all, mate, really. Um, just, you know, directionless, you know, no job, just relying on living on, on the street. Um, you know, make, making money and different things and uh, wrapped up then with addiction myself. And then um, <coughs> I found my faith in God and then started going to church and, you know, started putting things one foot in front of the other. And in fact, I started off uh, delivering pizzas and kebabs um, to start off because, you know, I had no CV, I had no resume, no job, and that's all I ever knew was how to live on the street. You know, I make money that way. Um, so I had to start off from a bottom, and it took me a few years to get to that place. You know, but I had to restore myself first. I had to start working on myself. You know, um, so it took a bit of time. You know, and like you know, I took a one job, and then and then the one come along, and another one, and then a better job, and then I started a little business for myself. Um, but then from there, then I really felt as if I wanted to help people and work with people. Um, so I became a youth worker, and then from there, then a drug support outreach worker. Um, and from there, then um, <clears throat> I work with homeless people. Um, with the whole homeless people, and I work in a society, uh, a Christian society in uh, Cardiff. So reaching like people with poverty and families and brokenness and stuff like that. So you know, it's a good place to be. I believe you know, um, yeah, yeah, it's a good place. I feel you know, my my, my life's experiences really helps benefit other people. Like you know, have you ever did prison time before? Yeah, I've done a bit, you know, uh, not much, not, not like some of you boys. Um, you know, I, I was behind the wall for about seven, eight months. But uh, but it was enough. It was enough for me to really realise, you know, this isn't for me. This is not a life for me. But that comes part and parcel of what you do. You know, you do the crime, you do the bird, and that's it. I hear you. And I'll I tell you, you know what? You look like you're a solid guy. You look like you're a tough guy. You know, you said you have a couple brothers and a... Yeah, yeah, it's a couple of brothers, yeah. So getting older now, old Jimmy, mate. <laughs> <You're getting older. laughs> well, well, you know what? As you get older, you slow down and you get smarter, right? Well, yeah, you get you get a bit of, you get a bit of wisdom there, Jimmy. You get a bit of wisdom. So tell me about yourself, Jimmy. What what actually was the turning point in your life? I know you were probably in jail. Um, I know you was probably facing a long time. Um, and what actually right. made you think I need to change my life? Well, well, well the thing is, you know what? Look. I went away, my first bid, I went away, I was 20, I was uh, actually 19 years old. I did three months in Rikers Island. From Rikers Island, I went to Bear Hill, that went upstate, uh, you know, that was a little experience, had a couple fights, fist fights up there, and then I came home after three months. At the age of 23 years old, uh, I was sentenced for a bank robbery and assault charge, a four to eight with the state, that ran concurrent with uh, the feds for a bank robbery, and as I'm away, I did a lot of thinking, you know. Uh, I spent my time around a lot of old timers, wise guys, and I learned that, you know what, this is not where I want to spend the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was a young kid, and I moved around pretty good, and uh, all these guys took a liking into me. And uh, But I didn't want to, you know, waste my life. And the thing is, what happened was, when I went away at 23 years old, now, I was very heavily involved in the game because I was involved in murders already, you yeah. know? So, uh, you know, I was in this life. Now, as I'm away, they kill my best friend. My own friends kill my best friend, you know? And, uh, it's Reynolds, boy, is it? Yeah, Reynolds. So, uh, and what happens is, you know, I'm also involved in, you know, some... Uh, I go, you know, I'm involved in a home invasion where an innocent woman gets killed and, uh, you know, so I'm doing time and I'm thinking about this. And I know eventually I'm going to get picked up. You know, yeah. I know it's going to happen. So it's just a matter of time. And then I hit the street after I do my time. I kept my mouth shut. I did my time. I kept my mouth shut. Then 
I'm home 11 months and all of a sudden guys are rolling on me, you know, and I say, you know what? I don't want to waste my life. So the prosecutor gives me a plea deal of 50 years in prison. And I say, you know what? I'm done. My life is over. And I come from a good family. I have no criminals in my family. I have all legitimate people in my family. And on my father's side, uh, you know, there's detectives and cops and stuff like that. I really don't know them. I know more of my mother's side. But I don't want to waste my life, you know. So uh, I said, you know what? Let me uh, cooperate. Let me uh, fix my life. Let me, you know, come forward and, you know, tell them what happened because there's an innocent woman that was killed and I got to get this off my chest. I'm holding this inside, you know, and it's eating me up. It yeah. really is, it's eating me up. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's when I come forward and, uh, you know, for my cooperation, I did eight years. So total, I have uh, maybe uh, a little more than 13 years in prison. Yeah. And, uh, you know, looking back, it went slow, but, uh, you know, I'm glad I made that decision. I'm at a better place in my life. And I got two kids now that I got to uh, take care of. And I got to take care of myself, you know. But I'm a teamster today. I got this little platform of uh, this YouTube channel where I can help anybody I can. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is where I am. That's brilliant, mate. I've heard you talk about faith. Like, I, I watched uh, Michael Francis and all that. You know what I mean? I um, watch a lot of him, and I know his, his transformation comes through faith, like myself. And I'm just wondering, was that the same for you, Jimmy? You know what? It, re it really is. What happened was my mother was a born-again Christian. Now, I grew up a Catholic, okay? I got baptized. I did my communion. And uh, then my mother, all of a sudden, she want, you know, she becomes a Christian. So I'm growing up my mother. My, my mom and dad is separated. My father ends up moving to Manhattan. And my mother stays in Brooklyn, New York. Now, I don't have no father figures. My father figures, my uncles are guys on the corner, the wise guys, you know, in the social clubs. And, uh, you know, these are the guys I look up to. And my mother's always telling me, Jim, you know what? You can't serve two masters. You can't serve the God up above and you can't yeah. serve the guys on the corner. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, look, when I realized, you know, I'm a greater force than my mother, nobody could stop me, you know? Yeah. But now, you know, after I do prison time and I experience doing prison time and I realize, you know what? I don't want to waste my life away because I'm surrounded by all these old timers that are doing life in prison. I'm saying, you know what? I don't want to die this way. You know, I feel like there's a better purpose for me, you know? And, uh, you know, I was never really a bad kid out there. I did a lot of bad things as far as I robbed banks. I was involved in a couple murders, but I was never the trigger guy. You know, mm -hmm. I was at the scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm coming forward. I got to fix my life. I got to make this right. I got to make this right. I got to make my life right. For your family, man. For your family. Yes. And uh, put them first. so, uh, you know, when, when uh, I got picked up and uh, my family found out that I was involved in, you know, these murders that I was involved in, they couldn't believe it. And they said, Jimmy, you're really involved in this. And I was ashamed of myself. Mm. You know, I didn't want to admit to it. But eventually I did. And, uh, you know, this is where I am today. That's brilliant, mate. So, yeah, that's fantastic. So, your children now, are they kind of they grown up? Are they still like young? I have an 8-year-old. I have a 12-year-old, you know. Yeah. And I just uh, I dropped them off at their mother's today. And, uh, listen, I love these kids more than anything. You know, God bless all our kids. And, uh, you know, these kids, this is the reason why I go on. And I take care of myself is because of them. Because they really make me laugh and they make me smile and they give me a purpose in life. Yeah, that's brilliant, mate. And it gives you joy. Keeps your feet in the floor, mate. Yes, it's it really do. Yeah, fantastic news, mate. Yeah, well, it's, Jimmy, mate, it's lovely to speak to you, mate. Honestly, it really is. And, uh, you know, keep up the good work. I'll be praying for you, mate. Stay strong, mate. And uh, keep on reaching those people out there that need that guidance and need that support. Because, yeah, it's nice to hear the mafia stories. But what's impo more important is the changes that you've made. The changes and the reaching out. You know what I mean? The reaching the lost, reaching the people that need that broken. And, and they blind, they, they put the blinkers on and they and they're brainwashed and blind by the street, you know, and, you know, they're out there trying to make a name for themselves and, you know, cracking heads and doing whatever they got to do. And, yeah, you know, at some point they got to face themselves in that, you know, whether it takes a prison cell or 
losing somebody close to them or whatever, they're going to face a real hard reality. You know, so it's really good when you're doing, you know, fantastic moves. And, and you know what? That's the thing. When you're young, you feel like you could just walk through walls. And then you realize, you know what? You know, especially there's a lot of guys today sitting in prison, sitting in a prison cell, and they went in there when they were a young kid. And right now, they're an old man. You know, yeah. and, this, and they're looking back and they're saying, you know what, what the fuck did I do to my life? What did I do to myself? What did I do to my family? You know, yeah. so before you even get there, you got to think, you got to make choices to make sure you never end up that way. You know, yeah. and this is, you know, I, I want to use my platform to help somebody else, you know what, make the right decision, make the right choice. You know what, don't end up in prison. You know, what? if you got to break your ass, there's nothing like having your freedom. Your freedom yeah. is the most important thing in life. Yeah, brilliant, man. Yeah. Yeah. No choice saying, like, because you can't do nothing. Can't even go for the walking back when you're in the jail. You can't do what you're going to do. Can't do nothing from the door, can you? You can't do nothing. They control your life. They tell you when to stand up, when to sit down, when to take a shower, when to eat, everything. Yeah. You know what? It's not a way to live. It's really not. It's like you're an animal in there. Yeah. So, so, so what, what else? I know you do a lot of stuff on the internet. Do you do any any other stuff to like with the prisons and stuff? Um, I, whether you're, you're going there to talk, to talk to people and stuff. You know what? I I don't do that. Uh, you know, I'm uh, actually talking to somebody, uh, a nonprofit organization, to uh, go in and start talking to some kids and stuff like that. I want to help anybody I can out there. You know, with uh, the little platform I have. You know, the the background I have, and I just want to make sure that uh, you know. These kids don't make the, the choices I made, you know. And there's a lot of peer pressure out there when you're surrounded by friends and, uh, you know, the streets. I know the streets aren't what they used to be as far as, uh, you know, uh, the hangouts and, you know, the organizations. It's still out there, but it's not as big as it used to be. But, uh, you know, if I can help anybody, you know, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, well, you've got a massive platform, haven't you? You've got great stories. You know, I know it's all in a bad context, but at the end of the day, people like stories. You know, they like to hear the, the, the you know, the grit and the grime and stuff. So you've already got that. You've been through that. You've built your life, you know, and, and, and the stories of change is the ones that are appealing to people, especially when they're in the darkness or in a bad spot or in, this, in the prison cell. And you know, we wrote the book at all, Jimmy, yet? Uh, I'm in the process. Actually, everything's written already. I have to edit it. I have to add some photos. And, uh, just add a little more into it. I got to detail it and make it a little better. And uh, yeah, well, everything's written already, you know. I just got to clean it up, put it together. What's it going to be called, right? Well, I got a couple names. Uh, you know, it's going to be Gangsters in Training, a Bath Avenue story. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to put it all in one uh, book or I'm going to create volumes and make it like uh, one volume, two volumes, three volumes. So. But uh, hopefully it's going to be uh, done within the next couple of months. And uh, I want to get it out there, you know, because I'm very excited about it. And uh, I've been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, for, for a lot of people, they're not going to get to hear you on the Internet. Do you know I mean? Especially if they're stuck in a cell, you know what I mean? And the books and they go into the prison cells and different things. And um, Yeah, a cousin of mine, he, he wrote a book called Uncaged. And, um, you know, it's in all the, all the prisons now in the UK. And it's helped a lot of people, you know. I mean, in fact, he was my drug runner. And now he became my pastor. Um, so, wow. yeah, he became my pastor. You and, know. You know, and you know what? That's what prison does to a lot of people. When you yeah. when you walk inside prison, like, people laugh and they say, wow, you know what? I found, I found God when I walked inside prison. But you know what? If you're going to find God, that's the place to find them. You know, yeah. inside prison, because that's where you want to better yourself, because that's where you have all the time to think, you know, what did I do to myself? What did I do to my life? What got me here in this prison? Mm -hmm. I mean, now, how do I fix this? How do I make my life right? You know what? Find God, because God will help you for yeah. sure. Oh, man. Yeah, he changed my life, mate. Honestly, he changed my life. Without him, I don't think I'd be alive. <clears throat> If I if I was alive, I'd probably end up being behind bars for a long time. You know, we'd probably still be in there. So yeah, thank him for every day, every day. You know, for my life. Um, so yeah. Well, Mar Marco, listen, it was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, and you. Uh, listen, hey, come on again, and if I'm ever over there, 
You come and see me. Yeah, mate, that'd be brilliant. Um, yeah, okay, that'd be great. If you're ever over here, Jimmy, it'd be a pleasure to come and meet you, mate. And, and hey, if you're ever in the States, let me know. <laughs> okay, mate. God bless you, Jimmy. God bless you. You take care of yourself. Ta-da. Thank you for coming on. Bye-bye. Marco Morelli. Okay, guys, if anyone else wants to come on, you got a story, you did some time, you're looking for help, you got a drug problem, Dominic uh, Santino, where are you? You reached out to me earlier. If you want to come on, come on. You know, listen, at the end of the day, you know what? Look, life ain't easy. We're all fighting a battle. We all lose people. And we all have to live with the decisions we made. I dropped the link. Press the link. Come on the channel. Come chop it up with me. If you did prison time, if you need some help with anything, let me know. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you guys. I drop the link, touch the link. You know, every day is an experience in life. You know, we look back on a lot of things that happened to us. I know I'm not the only one. I know there's a lot of people out there that things affected them. And we try to live with it. And sometimes, you know what? We don't want to ask for help. But you know what? Don't be shy or ashamed to ask for help because some people really need it. And some people really want to help you. So if you're one of those people, reach out. And if I could do something for you, that's what I'm here for. You know, look, growing up, I was never no gangster. <clears throat> I was a hoodlum. I was a thug. I looked up to these guys. I made a lot of bad choices in my life. Fortunately for me, after doing all this time and making the decision as far as cooperating, I'm at a better place. I got two kids. I got a teamster job. I got this little platform that I have with YouTube. And if I could do anything for anybody, that's what I'm here for. Ben Aberhard. Hey, Ben, why don't you come on? I see in the chat. Miss can't be wrong. Thank you. I see you. Elijah. Margaret Hearn. Sling Blade. What's up, Sling Blade? Hit the link. Come on. Pazzo, his Pazzo. Pazzo, what's up, baby? How's Jimmy, how you doing, buddy? How's everything? Oh, everything's good. How about you? Good. You know what? Look, you keep on asking me about merchandise. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. I, you know, I mean, I'm sorry to bother you, bro. I know you're busy and stuff, but uh, well, I mean, I don't know how to get. Uh, what do I got to do to do that, bro? <laughs> look, I mean, <laughs> look. This is this is the thing. Look, I have a lot of merchandise. Okay. Right. I mean, I have I have it down down here. And, uh, you know, look, I want to give it to you. And, uh, you know, if I could, uh, wh where were you located anyway? Jimmy, I'm up in Springfield, Massachusetts. Okay, so so, so you're in Mass. So I'm maybe uh, three, four hours from you, right? About three you're, prob you're probably about two and a half, you know, maybe three hours. Well, you, know what? I, well, you know what? This year, I probably am going to come out to uh, Massachusetts. So when I come out there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some uh, merchandise with me. And uh, hopefully I can meet up with you. Or, you know what? The thing is, I have so much merchandise. I just hate to put it in the mailbox and send it. I have, I actually have some boxes in my trunk of my car that yeah. I, uh, you know, filled up. And they're supposed to go out. But there's so many times where I get sidetracked, where I don't stop at the post office. It's actually in my uh, trunk for maybe two weeks now. I got like maybe uh, four or five boxes I have to send out. But I got so much merchandise. I know I love to hand it to you, 
and just. Well, no, no. Well, I'm gonna buy it from you. So what? So if I do when when I when I buy it from you, uh, I don't know how this is how this can work. Yeah, I guess I said you know that's because you're really busy then. I guess. And I, I understand that. So it, you know, it's like whatever you get around to it. I just wasn't sure if if there was a certain thing I had to do. If I had to uh, go to your what what this other website you've got, it's not up yet, right? You know what? That's, so, that's what 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 happened was. I made somebody uh, create my website for me. I paid them. And what happened was uh, every time I had to go into my website, I had to go through their email. So I told them, I said, you know what? Take it down. So it's like I felt like they were, uh, you know, watching everything I did, everything I sold, everything that was going out. So I said, you know what? Just take it down. It was take like, it down. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it was some shady shit. And uh, you know, really? I don't want I don't want to deal with them no more. So I said, oh, you know what? Take, I said, take it down. You know what? If I if I can't do it uh through my email, there's no reason for me to uh do it through your email. Hey Jimmy, wasn't he a guy a friend of yours or something like that or whatever? Or, or you know well, you know well, what? Not a friend, I, but some guy or you know, that though. Yeah, you know, I I met him through uh the internet. I mean he was a real he seemed like he was a real sincere guy, and uh I don't know. I guess some people get jealous, whatever it is. They get envious of other people. And the thing is, listen, you know what? I really try to, uh, you know, do the right thing towards people. And I gave him a yeah. shout out so many times. And I reached out to uh, his kids, his family. But uh, you know, some people aren't satisfied with the little things you do for them. You, you know? don't need that. You don't need that. You don't need that, Jimmy. You know what I mean? You don't need that crap. Just well, get rid of it. Like, like, I told him, I said, listen, you know what? Just... You know what? Delete the whole website. I'll create a whole new one. There you go. There you go. Now, okay. now, I, now I get it. I understand hey, now. Hey, but, but Pazzo, how about you? Have you ever did time before? I did a little bit of time, Jimmy. You know, I was lucky enough where I, did, I didn't have to do too much because uh, uh, we have a, the connection was in. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I, You know, I had, uh, I had a 9 to 12 suspended at, at Walpole you know, up in Massachusetts. It's a pretty now, rough place. Walpole, have you ever uh, run into a guy by the name of George Whaling? No, I don't believe so, Jimmy. I don't believe, how do you spell Whaley, 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 how do you say it again? George Whaling. He was a Boston guy. No, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. You know, Jimmy, you got a lot of tough guys out of the Boston way, too. Oh, no. I, look, I know because I did a lot of time with a lot of Boston guys, and all the Boston guys I met, let me tell you, whether they were Irish, whether they were Italian, tough. look, they're tough guys. I don't yeah. care. Look, whether they were good with their hands, look, they were willing to stick you too. Oh, absolutely, man. It's no, they, those guys, are no joke. Up, I mean, like, <laughs> I know. No I joke. know. Gee, even over here, even in Western Massachusetts, we're no, we were no joke over here, bro. We got some. This is a tough. At one time, it's extremely tough area. You know that crew I was talking about before is the real deal, man. It's a real freaking joke. Um, you know, it's it, it's changed a lot now. The guys, the guys that are running shit up here now were guys that I actually really kind of grew up with. You know how you have uh, you had uh, you know your friend. Um, Dude from CC, what's his name? I can't pronounce his name. How, how you say it? He, but well, he's doing time now. He's he, he was a main guy. He got made before. Uh, oh, you're, you're talking about uh Fabrizio. Yeah, Fabrizio. Yeah, right. that, like you grew you grew up with him. So well, yeah, me guys, and, yeah, me and Fabrizio grew up in the same building. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the guys, you know, guys that are running stuff around here now, uh, were guys that I do like, like that. I mean, our, our age group was the same. So, um, you know, and I I knew them growing up actually so but it's not um i don't know it's kind of a weird thing to me. I don't, you know it's not they don't seem as tough as the guys that were in there a, a while back to be honest with you you know like when my dad's age in, in, in his time and they he wasn't they're not they don't seem as uh they're not i don't think they're as tough as the guys back then there's no way man my dad's era was a real deal <laughs> these guys were no fucking joke bro um but besides all that the guys um the guys that are there now, um, one thing they're doing is they're they're keeping very quiet. You know what I'm saying? They're not all out on the corner. Like before, at one time, you had loads of guys. You'd have like 25 guys hanging out a corner. And, you know, you know who that is. That's them. Yeah. Um, now, nowadays, though, and even the mayor of Springfield now has shut down the Mountain Carmel Club. 
which was like the, the, the main club where everyone's that kind of hangs around. There's several clubs in the area where they where they conjugate, they hang out, social club, clubs, whatever. Uh, but the mayor of Springfield shut the shut shut them down on us. And uh, so now, you know, they're really quiet about stuff. And they're still there. I think everybody's getting the wrong idea. When everyone's talking about just, you know, uh, just the, the mom's gone, the mom's, you know, they're not there anymore. They're, they're done for. The life's over with. It's over with, you know, in, in a sense that the, the way they lived before, the way they all hung out. You don't remember on Bath Avenue. You got a million guys hanging around down the street, didn't you? Yeah. So, I mean, you could probably walk three blocks and you got, like, I don't know, 50 guys hanging out. Well, that's not there now. But they're still around, bro. It doesn't mean that the, that the mom's not dead. You know, I, up here it's not. They're, they're all there. They're just not, uh, what's the word for it? They're just not hanging out there in your face anymore. I think they're just going to be a little bit smarter. I think they're just, um, you know, regrouping, restructure. I don't know what it is, but they're just, you know, and, and as far as, the, like you said, the, the murders, you know, they're, that's like... It's kept real quiet now, and you know, what, maybe they're not, they're not probably not even doing that as much anymore. Well, you know what it is, it's more watered down today. Watered I mean, down, I, I, I mean, years ago, it was a lot. Yeah. I mean, look, the generation before me was a little wild than me and my crew, you know, and then the generation before that was a little more wild. And uh, listen, you know. The, the kids today are a lot different than uh you know when I was growing up. You know when I was yeah, growing up, Jimmy. when I was growing up, you know what? If you yeah. came out, if you came out of your mouth and you disrespected anybody, you had to put up your hands. Oh God, you know, Jimmy. I mean now today, as you see, uh, you know these kids, look, they don't put up their hands today. Oh you know, my God! Give me a up, break. Internet, look, internet, rah rah rah. I'm saying they're all yeah, rah, rah, rah. exactly. Back, 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 back. And the thing is, too, they oh, get personal. Man. So what they do is they get personal and they get offended. So what, what they do is let me throw his picture up and uh, oh. I'll humiliate, look, I'll humiliate him that way on the internet. Oh, my God. So, so at the end of the day, they're cowards. You know what I'm saying? No doubt about it, bro. Jimmy, do you remember, like, uh, this was a while back when I, I used to get so mad because, uh, you know, people would be out there shouting at you, saying shit. And uh, there was a couple of times, man, I wanted to get in my fucking car, man. And I'm telling you, I was ready to, I got a couple of my, couple of my buddies. I, I got to go call up my friend of mine down there in Brooklyn, this fucking asshole. I was so fucking mad, Jimmy. That shot. I was coming out of my skin. You know what would have happened, man, if I had gotten a whole couple of these fucking cocksuckers? Oh, my God, Jimmy. I, thought, I probably would have ended up in the fucking can, bro. I was so fucking mad. You know you know who I'm talking about, who the fuck, who was being an asshole. And... uh you know, I, 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 I couldn't believe this shit was coming out of their mouth, Jimmy. Because, where, you know, where, I, where you come from, where I come from, you know, you don't talk to people like that. Unless you're talking to their face. Uh, you know? Course, absolutely. It's just total disrespect. And they're hiding behind this computer. And, you know, just the shit that was coming out of their mouth. Oh, my God, Jimmy. I was completely losing it. I was ready to strap up a couple of times. I swear to God, I was so fucking mad. You know, I said, and, we'll, we'll, show, we'll scare the fuck out of them, show them what it's really all about. You know? You, know what, you know what it is? Look, it only takes a couple seconds to make the wrong decision. I know it, Jimmy. And then, I know. And then, and then know. the thing is, look, after it's done, you can't take it back. That's so you're right. What you have to do is, you know what? You got to take a deep breath and, you know what? Turn around and walk away. Because oh, it's so hard. Life. You could destroy your life very easily. Oh, like, it's so hard to do that with, with with this with this kind of a thing. You know, when they're pushing the buttons like that, it, it's really difficult to walk and turn around and go the other way. Absolutely, hundred percent. I look, oh, there's so, many, look there's so many there's so many times I want to lash out, but I say, you know what? Let me just zip it. There's only one way to beat them. It's with a pen and paper. That's it. Yeah, you know, like you said, things have changed so much. That's that's the way you got to do it, I guess. That's right? the way you have to do it. Pen and paper. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm still from old school, Jimmy. It's real difficult for me. That's I, why I thought. I said, sure, let's go to, um, that's what we're, when you were talking about, you get a couple guys together. 
two, three, four guys, whatever, maybe even more. Maybe you get like maybe you grab ten guys and you meet up in a place like you know, make reservations and meet up in Ponte Vecchio, right? Or something like that. Just something nice. It doesn't have to be Ponte Vecchio. Any, any place. Any place. But I've never been there. I heard it was good. So uh, I heard I heard you say it was good. So now, uh, now, Ponte Vecchio is still there. Actually. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's is that is that is that place is that a connected place or is that just uh yeah, yes, right? that's a, yes that's a connected place that's like a Colombo hangout oh so you don't want to mess around in there then yeah um, oh that's I guess maybe I mean is that some place that uh you know now this guy now, now this guy over here this guy Stephen he's saying Jimmy back in the day did you know Clayton from Bay Twenty Third and Bay now Clayton I I do remember Clayton when I was a kid I heard a lot of stories about him this guy Clayton he used to walk up to police officer look and he would knock them out i'm telling you look, oh. he would, look he would just walk up to them and knock them knock them out oh my god like, we have guys like that steven's talking about and oh my god and eventually it killed him too no that's, shit. that's how my neighborhood was my neighborhood was very vicious no you had a, you had an extremely tough neighborhood jimmy it's much you know i don't know how much yeah much tougher than than where i came from i mean we had a tough neighborhood as well but nothing that's how you know i i know we had a real tough neighborhood. we were extremely tough guys but compared to where you came from i just can't believe that it. it was that crazy no, it, it was, was huh it, it was, was that bad huh it was insane it really was I'm like, what the fuck? how the fuck i mean how did you guys live well a lot of guys didn't live through it that's you know i guess and you know and, um and the thing is you know what even the young kids look the young kids will get killed if look if you got out of order, you know what? Maybe the first time you get a pass. The second time, you'd be lucky if you got a pass. The third time, you're getting killed. Forget it. Oh, my God. But that's how it was. Just, I mean, you know, and it's not, it's a lot of times it had nothing to do with the mob, right? It would just be other gangs, other kids. Is that Absolutely. what you're saying? Yep. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how you guys did it, man. You know what is? Look, you took justice into your own hands. Your own hands. That's how it was. Wow. 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 Pretty tough. Pretty tough kids, man. You know? And, and, and a lot of times you guys are the ones that are making the the decision of who's gonna live and die. It's kids making those decisions. And and you know what? It's really it was all foolish because uh look, you end up killing a, you end up killing a kid and then you know what? Then those kids' friends end up killing someone you know so now you're going back and forth and at the end of you know the day all the parents are crying all the families are crying you know because now this one's murdered the other one's murdered and uh if nothing good comes out of it yeah absolutely i mean I, I i just can't i can't believe that you're burying all your friends and everything oh my god yep. that's just wow talk yeah. about tough yeah it's talk a, about tough it's a it's a sad story, it really is. Jimmy, I mean, um, like you know, if you if, say you had, say you had like you know three or four, maybe five guys, and you, they all met up for dinner in Brooklyn, right? Friends from this from this stuff or whatever. Is that is that a feasible thing to do? Is it safe? I, I mean, no, absolutely, because we had a uh, uh, restaurant on Twentieth Avenue in Bed. And that's the restaurant we would go to all the time because that was our neighborhood. It was called uh, Paradiso. And uh, we were going there, it was an Italian restaurant, and that was our hangout, you know? So, uh, you know, we would go to spots that were safe in our area. You know, if you went out of the neighborhood, of course you weren't safe, but you always had a gun on you anyway, you know? Right, 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 right. Oh my God, this made scary stuff, bro. It sounds like it could be, but I I just want to just want I don't want to take up all your time. I just there was one there was just one thing more thing I wanted to ask you. When you um, left, when you when you didn't leave, but uh, when you did the second the second bid you did was it eight years? That was for my cooperation. I got eight years. Right, right. When you did that, what Jimmy? What was that like? Was that obviously it was a lot different than the first time you did? Absolutely. Look, it was a right. lot different because. Uh, the first time I did the six years in population, the second time when I cooperated, I did a lot of time in the hole. 
And then uh, from there, what you do is you go to, uh, you know, look, it was very hard for me to cooperate. You know saying? And uh, so I did a lot of time in the hole. Then from there, they bring you to a, a unit where everyone else is cooperating. You know, I didn't want to go to that unit. So after a while, I did go to that unit and I stayed in that unit. And that's where I finished my bid. I was never a problem child. You know, I knew how to do time. I was right. how to do time. I minded my business and that's what I did. You know, but, uh, you know, I got 80 years for my cooperation. Now, when, when, um, did it seem like it took a long time to do that part of the, the Absolutely. You know, the, it, yeah, did. I, it took a long, I felt like it took well, longer, I, huh? It took forever. It took forever because yeah. as you're doing time, all the guys out there know, you know what, time goes by so slow. Looking back, it goes by fast, but looking ahead, it goes by so slow. But hold on a minute, Pazzo. The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. Streets will never love you back. Cool. cool. Um, so, Jimmy, is that a feasible thing to get a bunch of us guys together to have to have a bite to eat? Do you think, or is that maybe maybe it's not uh, yeah. is e easier no, I, said than done? Because you know, maybe you're busy. Not, look, absolutely, we could do that. Hundred percent. Absolutely. Uh, the thing is, look, I, I plan on coming down to uh, Massachusetts soon, uh, maybe in the right. summertime. Oh, uh, I, I, want, I want to, yeah, I want to visit the North End. Oh, in Boston. Oh, you're going to love it. Yeah, I want to. You're going to love it. How far are you from there? I probably about an hour and 15 minutes. That's no big deal. It's nothing. Yeah, yeah. I want to visit the North End. I got, uh, I want to visit uh, Bobby Louise and, uh, Oh, you have a great time with those guys. Yeah, those guys and Paul are great. Tanzo. Yeah. So, uh, probably in the summertime, I'm going to come down there. I I was also invited from some other people down there. So, right, uh, right. You know, I definitely want to do that. So, you know, when I come down there, what I'll do is I'll reach out to you. I'll let you know I'm coming, and you can come have dinner with us. That sounds great. I'd love to do that. What about – pardon me for smoking, Jimmy. That's a rotten habit. I, Good, I, I, I apologize. Fine. Don't worry. No class with that. I got to get rid of them. Um – Fine. Maybe uh you know Boston is maybe Boston J or Gianni or a couple other guys that are in the area. I don't know where Boston J really is. Yeah, no, is he yeah. in Boston or no, yeah, he's a, yeah, he's <laughs> Boston. yeah, Boston J's in Boston, yeah. So I mean if you get if you get Jay and then if you know this the, the other guys are Gianni, I don't I don't see him out here uh I don't see him out here today. But I know he's from He's from the area, and I thought maybe I thought he was only going to bring Chicky around, or somebody was going to bring Chicky around. <laughs> no, no, Chicky's the real. Chicky was the real deal, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Chicky did some time. I really don't know Chicky. Uh, you know, I might have uh, spoke to him as far as once in, a, in maybe a message or something, but I, I don't know him. But I know he did some prison time. I know he was around some. Uh, I think the Genovese crew. I'm not sure, but uh, you know. Listen, these these guys, you know what? Look, these guys who are good time, I respect them. I really do. And uh, you know, look, if you're a man, you're a man. Yeah. Chicky you know, Chicky was around Chicky was around those guys um even tighter than I was. He was he was around those guys a, as a kid and uh really tight. Yeah, I mean it, you know, Al Bruno and a few other guys that yeah, he was around those guys and those guys were serious guys. Um, and he was really around those guys since he was a kid, man. So yeah. he'd be a good guy. He'd be a good guy to maybe have on as a, as a guest. Seriously. Well you, well, you know what? These guys are funny because I'm going to tell you. you know, and no disrespect to them, but the thing is because I cooperate with the government, you know, it's hard to get some people on here because they look at me a little different than – Oh, uh, man, come on, Jimmy. No, 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 Seriously. No, no, no. But, but the thing is, look, I have to – look, I call a spade a spade. I mean, there's no mm. bullshit in me. I'm a straight oh, absolutely. So I have to say it the way it is. And you are, Jimmy. You know, these guys, 
you know, that's how they look at it. And, you know, and, you know, that's fine. I understand. That's fine. And you know what? If they don't want to come on, look, I want someone else's show. I have no problem with that. I didn't realize. I didn't realize, Jimmy. And he, hey, but, and, you know, hey, but the wow. thing is, look, but the thing is, they got to understand, you know what? You know, I was involved in more messes than them, you know, and, 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 I, and I did a lot more than they did. And I'm not knocking, look, and I'm not knocking them. And look, I made a lot of bad choices in right. my life. But the thing is, you know what? I woke up and I grew up and I said, you know what? That's not where I want to end up. So I did what I had to do and I'm at a better place in my life and I'll never regret it. I got two beautiful kids that I love and adore. And, uh, you know, this is who I am and this is what I stand on. All right, but listen, Pazzo, let me go. Okay, John. All right, Jimmy, thanks for the time. I really appreciate it, bro. I'll and see you hopefully, soon. Hopefully I'll talk to you soon, yes. And about I'll the merchandise, what do I, what should I do? Should I, should I just wait or? Yeah, just wait. Send you a check, you know. I'll, listen, I'll see you soon. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you soon. All right, thanks, buddy. You got it. Okay, bye-bye. Right. Pazzo, good guy, Pazzo. I got Mike Quenos on here. Mike, what's up, buddy? Mike, what's up? Hey, hi, bud. <coughs> so, um, uh, two two quick things, and I'll and I'll take my answers off, so I don't clog you up up your channel. So, first thing was a question. I was watching on Netflix a few weeks ago. They had a, a documentary about the uh, the Yusef Hawkins, you know, the black kid who was supposedly going to come from Browns, was coming to buy the car, and he went to, mm -hmm. to Bensonhurst, and he ended up getting shot. Whatever. So one thing is, and and then they they showed a lot of documentary footage about how all the you know Al Sharpton brought the protests, and so all the locals That's you know going it. crazy and everything. Go ahead. So a couple questions on that. Did you know, uh, you know, what was what was your memory of that? And did you know any of those knuckleheads who were involved, like Joey Farm and the rest of those guys? And, and with just kind of what what your memories of that was? Now, 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 the thing is, those kids were from 20th Avenue, okay? So 20th Avenue uh, and Bath Avenue don't run along the same way. So 20th Avenue was further down, and that was uh, past 75th Street. I'm on Bath Avenue, so that's maybe uh, I would say uh, a mile or so from me, where I where I am. So you know, I don't know those kids. Uh, when I was growing up, those kids might have had a couple years on me. And uh, you know, Yusuf Hawkins, I remember that time. Uh, I think he was come coming there to visit some girl or something, and uh, you know, these kids end up killing him. At that time, there was a lot of. Uh, you know, racial tensions going on. But, uh, you know, I know nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? I was never involved in any of those, uh, you know, things like that. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I can't really elaborate on that because I know nothing about it. But uh, I remember, though, you know, I remember a little of it. I had nothing to do with that area. But, uh, you know, at that time, I remember there was a lot of people on roofs throwing things off of the roofs on Al Sharpton and stuff like that. But the thing is, too, you got to remember something, in all honesty. Al Sharpton is an opportunist. I'm saying, I mean, this guy is really full of shit. I mean, you know, you got to say it the way it is. I'm saying, I mean... Well, every, everybody guy, in New York City knows that. Excuse me? Yeah, everybody in New York City knows that. You know, it comes all the way back from the Tawana Brawley bullshit. When, yeah. Uh, and, that little, and, that and, girl's ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 this, so this guy is really a, a bullshit artist. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, look, you know, I'm not into all that uh that racial shit. Look, in all honesty, look, I have black friends. I actually have black family. My first cousin, uh Joseph, my first cousin Anthony just married a a, a black girl a couple years back. So uh listen, there's black women that I think that are beautiful. You know what I'm saying so uh, you know, look, today's world uh is a lot different than back then, but uh, you know, I have nothing to do with stuff like that, so uh, you know, I can't uh, elaborate on that. Yeah, all right, cool. I appreciate you saying it because I uh, I remember when it happened, like it was just I was in high school, and uh, you know, I definitely have some family who lives in Bensonhurst and you know stuff like that. I remember it was a, it was it was a powder keg, so I just was wondering if some of the even though they might not have been coming down your street to process it, like some of the overflow. 
or maybe you know some of the friends wanted to go see what the hell was going on. It was it was just you, but you're saying it was isolated to 20th Avenue mostly. Yeah. Uh, listen, you know what? In my neighborhood in Bensonhurst on Bath Avenue, there were some older guys older than me that were racist. And uh, I got to tell you, if you were to visit me and I was to introduce you to my family, I have Puerto Ricans in my family. I have Dominicans in my family. I have Italians in my family. I have Irish in my family. My family is very uh, well versed. I'm saying so, uh, you know, I'm not down with all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. You know, if you, if you grew up in New York City, you're definitely going to be exposed to all that shit. And even in that yeah. documentary, there was a kid. He's a grown man, man now, but one of their best friends was a black dude. That was, I, I, give, I recommend you checking out that documentary. And he actually got a lot of static from people outside of the community said that he was a sellout, all this other stuff. Because you look at him, you hear him. He, he sounded exactly like one of the regular kids from their neighborhood. So that's just that. Appreciate that. I was just curious. And then the last thing I let Allah, uh, you know, thanks for letting me get on is uh, with your book. I, I have reached out. We have communicated. Just a recommendation. It's obviously your call, but I definitely recommend you doing the the installments like you're talking about the volumes. Because if you put everything in that in that in that one piece, then you know uh, I, I think you'll you'll I think you're gonna regret it actually. And, and you know, because if if you do things in stages, like you know whatever whatever order you want to do it. I think in the long run, you're going to make more money and you're going to have people, you know, kind of uh, wanting more. Like, oh, when's the next one coming out? When's the next one coming out? Like, that's like these authors like Michael Crichton and, you know, even J.K. Rowling. And I know those are fiction books, but your story, if you if you drag it out, you're going to have more and you'll even have more of an audience. And, and if you put it in chunks, like 100 pages or 120 pages instead of maybe three, four, five hundred pages, you get more people to read it. Just something to, to, to kind of chew on and think about as you're going through the process. But if, I think if you did it in, in volumes, even up to five, probably be easy to do. And you, in the long run, I think you're going to make a lot more money. Well, you know what? Thank you for recommending that. I appreciate that. And uh, you know what? that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out with a volume one, like you said, 120 pages. And then what I'll do is uh, I'll do volume two. And then at the end, I'll put them all together. I'm saying in one makes, book. Makes sense. Yeah. But well, I guy, appreciate it, bro. Like I said, yeah, but this guy, this guy is ask, asking you, is is that you he's asking? I can't even see what the name Pat is. Okay. And never, what is, yeah, yeah, never, yeah, yeah, he's not, he's not talking to you. That's fine. But uh, listen, hey, Mike, <laughs> right. Mike, Mike, where you from? Mike, where you from? I'm from Staten Island, and I was born okay. in Brooklyn. I was born in downtown on Pacific Street between Hoyt and Bond. You know, I grew up in, you know, lived, my grandma lived on uh, Columbia Street off of, on Baltic off of Columbia. I was all over the place, man. And uh, like, you know, the couple communicated. I knew all the, you know, the Springville guys. I don't want to mention their right. names now, but they were connected to Bernardo, you know, all those guys, TG and yeah. another yeah. guy live, right? You know, yeah. when you talk about Scarlet's, you know, TG used to own Scarlet. So, I yeah. mean, I know all that whole, the whole situation and stuff. Actually, a kid, he's alive. He's locked up for life. So, I'll mention his name. Uh, CJ Henniger. He was, uh, he was uh, the one of the, the kill guys with uh, Papa, John Papa. So I know yes. all those guys, you know, stories you tell and yes. stuff. We're in, interconnected. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I'm in, I'm in North Carolina now. I've been down here 20 years. Oh, good. Nice. Good for you. It's nice out there. Yeah. yeah you know, it's calm. I, I, uh, after 9-11, I, uh, I joined the military, did a, did a tour in Afghanistan and we kind of stayed down here. We liked it down here. I got into, uh, into the teaching games. So I teach high school and I, and I do some other things down here. But, uh, but yeah, man, so like I said, I know you get a million emails, but, you know, check that email I sent you about the book and stuff. I definitely, if you want to maybe talk about that a little bit, I got, you know, some more ideas. At least if you don't do it, which is definitely your call, maybe we could bounce some ideas this way. You could, you know, get the right process. And the other thing, I'll, the last thing I'll say before I go is keep control of it, man. Publish it yourself. It might be a little harder, but all the money will be yours instead of selling the rights yeah. to somebody else. You'll hold the copyright. You know what? And that's a lot to think about, you know, because I'm the type of person where I like to be my own boss and I like to have control of my own life, you know? Absolutely. I mean, it, might, it might sound you know, like six figures or something like that, but then they own it and then you're basically working for them. But if you keep it yeah. and just put the, you know, put the word, pub. you know that guy, Frank DiMatteo? You heard him? Yeah. He's been on Vlad and the Ball. Yeah. yeah. He self-publishes too. And he, you know, he was he was actually from Brooklyn, my neighborhood, in, in uh, Pres uh, in uh, 
uh, Carol Gardens, and he was supposedly down with Joey Gallo and all those guys. So yeah. he might be so too. He could probably tell you, but he, he actually has a magazine called Mob Candy. You ever remember that one? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think he has it anymore, but yes, I remember that. Right, and he's coming out. Supposedly he's relaunching. But anyway, the only reason I bring that up, he knows about publishing, so that might be somebody to kind of reach out to. You know, same genre as you, and he, he's actually done it. So just another thing, man. But anyway, let me get off here. Thanks very much for letting me on, and have a good rest of your Sunday, bro. Hey, Mike, thanks for coming, man. I appreciate it. You take care. Take care, bro. All right, bye-bye. Yeah, that was uh, Mike Quinos. Nice guy. But uh, all right, so I'm on here for an hour and a half. I'm going to drop a link one more time. If any of you guys want to come on, you're welcome to come on. I appreciate the kindness and the support. It means a lot to me. It really does. And, uh, you know, if you want to talk about, uh, you know, if, uh, if you have a prison story to talk about, if you have uh, a redemption story, whatever it is, you know, you're welcome to come on. I'd love to have you. Live and let live. Where are you? You want to come on, live and let live? Yeah, no, I'm not going to sell my stories rights. That's for sure. You know, but I am uh, going to drop a volume one soon for sure. Graffiti Matt, you want to come on? I dropped the link. If you want to come on, hit the link. Come on the show. Sade, a.k.a. Little Mario. I support you, Jimmy. I have a big channel also. One day we can hook up. Okay, whatever you want. If you want to come on the show, hit the link. Come on the show. If not, I understand. Live and let live. You want to come on the show? I drop a link one more time. I'm going to uh, make this short. No one wants to come on. So to all you guys out there, you know, that are looking to, you know, make your lives better, whether you did prison time, if you're looking for a job, you can reach out to me if I can help you in any way uh, with any kind of resources I have. I know some people in the uh, tri-state area in New York City. If I can help you, that's what I'm here for. Uh, you can reach out to me at the real Jimmy Calandra at gmail.com. Okay, guys. Well, listen, I'm on for an hour and a half. I appreciate all you guys showing up. Ben, do you want to come on? I see you in the chat. Stephen Levy. I used to live on Bath Avenue and Bay 29th Street. All right, guys. Well, listen, you know what? I'm going to go. Uh, I appreciate all you guys chumming in today. We got 233 people in the chat. Uh, thank you for your support. I love you guys. You guys are the best. Like I said, you could reach out to me anytime you like. If I can help you advertise your business or in any kind of way, just let me know. One more time, we're going to put my intro in. I'll see you. The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you.
streets will never love you back.